Howdy y'all, Caleb here. We're gonna look at some lists from this past weekend. We got a couple of GTs to look at and what lists for Seraphin, of course. We're not looking at any other lists. <laughs> Which ones did the best this past weekend at some GTs? If one of these happens to be you, let us know in the comments how you how your games went, how everything uh, shook out in your, your GT. Um, looks like it was a lot of fun this past weekend. The first one is the Age of Sigmar GT in Sacramento. It was a smaller tournament. It looks like it was about 12 people, 10. It looked, lasted through the whole thing, which makes for an interesting GT because with only 10 people making it to the end, you're playing, just, <laughs> you're playing half the field by the end of your game. So uh, pretty fun playing a small one like that. And John Gray taking Seraphim, and he took out the tournament with five wing wins. Well done, John. Let's take a look at his list here. Let's, uh, how about we make that bigger? <laughs> so, of course, he's taking Seraphim with Coalesced and Thunder Lizard. So, we got some Coalesced. In case you're new to Seraphim, Coalesced will give you minus one damage to incoming attacks. It also gives you some other fun stuff to play with, some terrain um, features on your side that give you plus one to your prayer rolls, a six up ward save if you're in range of it and can be deadly to your enemies. Um, and Thunder Lizard will let you do some fun things with monsters. So it gives you extra two wounds on your monsters, and it allows you to either either double fire your engine of gods for a command point, or double fire a Basildon for a command point. So you can do one of those in Thunder Lizard. Really fun faction that does pretty well right now in the meta. Grand strategy is no place for the weak, so John is looking to kill all his enemies' battle line. This is it's a fun strategy. Hey, you know, you're not playing around with with leaving models on the board. You're not you're not going to try to position anything. You're here to kill things. <laughs> uh, it's a fun grand strategy. Uh, it can be dependent. I mean, if you get up against an army that has really, really resilient battle line, you could be in trouble, especially if they just hide one from you. But generally, battle line in this game dies. That's what it does. So not a bad grand strategy. Let's see, our Triumph Inspired gives you a plus one to your wound if you, if you get the Triumph. Leaders, we have Engine of the Gods as our general with Prime War Beast, which gives you extra mount attacks in, in melee for the Engine of the Gods. Artifact of Power is Arcane Tome that turns the Engine of the Gods into a wizard. And so now you get the Hand of Glory spell, which gives you reroll hit rolls of one. You can pass that out to just about any unit in this army will make great use of that Hand of Glory spell. Because it's also a, a priest, you get a prayer and you're taking curse. If you get curse off, generally that's going off on a four up. Um, but if you're near your terrain, which gives you plus one, then you can get that off on a three up. It has a range of nine inches, which is just a fantastic little prayer because when you curse an enemy unit, all hits of sixes against that unit are a mortal wound. So just a fantastic prayer. Love getting that off, and will definitely kill things when you do. <laughs> Skink Priest has a prayer of heal. Skink Priest is a great little piece, for, especially for only 90 points. Buffs anything that has a Skink keyword with... Um, it's a 3-up roll, so it is a roll, but um, you do get plus 1 to your um, save and run, shoot, and charge with that ability. And then heal. You're going to keep things healed up like you're still on. And... Um, you also have a command point to give you plus one to hit, which is quite useful. John's taking Duralia Vendence, which, you know, you haven't really seen this ally pop up all that often lately, but still a great choice, especially in the meta where we're having a lot of wizards. So this ally from Cursed City, I think, is a a witch hunter. You know, it's out there looking for for wizards to kill. And so it, it uh, she, I guess it's a she, has extra damage versus wizards, I believe, or something like that, but also gets extra attacks and damage if you don't move her. So the trick used to be, which we saw her pop up quite a bit a few months back, but, you know, deploy it in the Realm Shaper engine and then pop it out, not a move, and now you still have your extra attacks, extra damage, and it's she's made up, you know, six inches of extra of movement out of your Realm Shaper engine. So nice little strategy there. Great for picking off wizards and also for, I think she can shoot endless spells too to dispel them. So when we, we see a lot of endless spells around right now, especially Purple Suns, not a bad piece for 115 points. 
Salon Star, Star Master, you know, the core of any Seraphin list, gives you extra command points, unbinds board wide, and is a powerful caster in its own right. Especially when you get Artifacts of Power, the Atixi Grubs, which gives you reroll hit, uh, reroll a spell cast or dispel or unbind once per hero phase. So a, a great little artifact. I love taking that. Also lets you heal one in your hero phase. So if your Salon starts to take some damage, a great little way to top them off. But you're really taking it for that rerolls to casting, unbind, and dispel. As there's nothing like you know failing a Comet's Call and getting to reroll it and rolling high. Or miscasting, which is just the bane of any of any slon or you know any wizard that you're paying a lot of points for, and you get to reroll that. So great artifact, spell Stellar Tempest. That's a good horde busting spell. Then we have a Stegadon with Skink Chief. Yes, love the uh, Stegadon Chief with Skystreak Bow, beautiful three damage attacks, and the uh, Fusil of Conflagration artifact to give you some mortal wounds. But of course. The fusel for me, I always just it always ends up getting destroyed when you need it most. Uh, Mount traits beastmaster. I you know I think I would have if I if I were to change anything, give the you know make the general the slot the second on chief so you can get that prime war beast because that gives you an extra shot too. Prime war beast works for all mount attacks, so uh, you do get an extra sky streak bow shot which comes in handy. But his his strategy may have been to keep that general alive longer than you generally do with your second on chief while you're sending it into attack a source astrolith bear which gives you pluses to your um cast and extends that range for your cast so i'm guessing we're gonna see a purple sun down here somewhere yep there's a purple sun Oop. so purple sun cast with the astrolith bear you know through your um wizard skink engine of the gods and you can get some really good range on that purple sun. Uh, you can generally throw it most of the way across the board on your first turn there. Some source guard to take wounds off the slon, some knights as your screen, and a stegadon as another battle line option. Both of those, are they in bounty hunters? Yes, they are in bounty hunters. Great, good, good, good. Knights and stegadon in bounty hunter are a lot of fun. Give you extra attacks versus Galician veterans. And then a Bastildon with Solar Engine. That's going to be your double firing target. Pairs excellently well with the Skink Priest, wherever you want to put that at. And uh, both, let's see, we got a Warlord, Command Entourage, and Bounty Hunter. So high drops, not a whole lot of bodies, to be honest, but, you know, it looks like he's out to kill things. Good threats there with the Purple Sun, with all, all your beasts here. We got four monsters. What is that? Four monsters? Yeah. And, uh, Great casting and a little wizard hunter there to for some for some tricks, and of course purple sun just just makes everything better. <laughs> All right, great great job, John. Uh, pulling in that whoop lost it, pulling in that five and zero uh, score in that GT. Awesome, awesome. Next tournament we have the Emerald City Open, <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. All right. Uh, interesting name, big tournament. Uh, well, mid-sized tournament, I guess. We got uh, something like 41 players at this one. Uh, so good showing there. And it's uh, a good spread of, of lists here in the top 10. We had a, a Daughters of Cain and a Sons coming in one and two with Zinch coming in third. Then we had a Thunder Lizard list at four, Maggotkin, Skaven Tide. And I think I saw even another Skaven Tide. Yeah, another Skaven Tide at top. 10. So we had two Skaven Tide in the top 10. We had two Suns in the top 10. Soul Black Gravelord and another Seraphim list. So, you know, an interesting an interesting spread there between some of the factions you don't normally see at the, at the top of the list right now, but uh, Skaven Tide making a good showing. Um, which, you know, hey, that's our that's our natural enemy, right? So let's let's kill some let's kill some rats. Uh, so our first, we're going to look at Stark's list. He had Thunder Lizard, and he came in at fourth, lost his first game, but then made a great showing and won the last four, coming in four and one. So here's his list. Uh, let's see if I can get that on screen. All right, so we got Seraphim Coalesced and Thunder Lizard with Grand Strategy Continuous Expansion. I think this is the second time I've seen our Thunder Lizard Grand Strategy implemented. So, you know, not bad, not bad. 
Triumph's Indomitable. Interesting. Uh, we've got a Lord Croak in there. A you know, Croak starting to pop up more and more in this magic heavy meta that I think we're in. Well, it's that's dominated by Purple Sun. Let's be honest here. Um, we have a Skink Priest with Fusil of Conflagration. <laughs> we put the Fusil on the Skink Priest. All right, with uh, heals. Do we not have anything else we can put it on? No, nah, not really, I guess. Sometimes you see it on the Astralith, but that Astralith is probably hanging out with Croak. Okay, so Skink Priest is going to be moving up, probably with uh, Basilidon with Solar Engine into range, maybe. Okay, interesting choice. Uh, we have a Source Astralith, which, which is you know tied to Croak's hip. <laughs> uh, we could almost just raise Croak's 140 points and just add that War Scroll to him, because... If you're taking Croak, you're taking an Astrolith. Uh, it extends Croak's range, which you, you need because Croak's spammable spell that does D3 mortals in an AO, like an area of effect is only 10 inches, so you need to push that out further with the Astrolith to where it's 16 inches now. And he's got an Arcane Tome on his Engine of Gods, so you can, you can push it through the, Arcane, the Engine of Gods now as well. So Engine of the Gods is a general with Prime Warbeast. Give it extra attacks, obviously. Arcane Tome, make it a wizard so you can cast through it. And Mount Trait Beastmaster, obviously extra attacks there too. And Hand of Glory as a spell for reroll hit rolls of one. Curse, we talked about that on the last list. Great prayer there. And then Bound to the Cron Spine, Incarnate of Gur. So I'm guessing that's showing up down here. It is. So uh, we got that Engine of Gods. Going to be pressing forward probably near Cron Spine, but so that you can also... Uh, have that kind of dual threat. You got a good melee threat here with the engine and the cron spine, which it's bound to, but also you're going to be casting those spells from Croak through this engine. So uh, some good threats here. Battle line, 10 skinks, or, you know, that's just that's just bodies in a screen. Five guard to protect Croak, which you've got to have, and nine source knights, or <laughs> nine source knights. That's what they come in in a box. Five source knights. Uh, to do some decent damage when they, when they get the chance to. What are they in? We got we got some bounty hunters. What else was in the bounty hunters? Guard was, uh, the, you know the guard might might be in 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 melee at some point. Probably not. But if you're playing aggressive with Croak, they will, and uh, they're probably gonna take some wounds. But that might be in. They might be in melee. They do okay in melee. Our behemoths. We got a Basildon with solar engine. And a Cron Spine Incarnate of Gur. Both of those are in the Line Breaker Battalion. And then Endless Spells, Horgast, and Purple Sun of Shayish. So we see this combo quite a bit where we have our Croak, Astrolith, and Purple Sun. That's uh, always a great combo. Don't underestimate that Horgast because especially turn one, uh, or if you see a, a good target that you want to you know, apply some damage to and make it to where they can't inspiring presence and then they'll lose more if they fail. So um, it can be just absolutely devastating to, to elite units that have bad bravery or elite units that you can plink off a couple of them and then force the rest of them to run and ro roll D3. And it's just, ooh, it's brutal when you can when you can get that combo up. So some good threats there, you know. Croak will do damage on his own. Engine will do damage. Um, Bastildon's going to do what a Bastildon does. And then Cron Spine uh, to terrorize the board along with his friend, the Purple Sun. <laughs> All right. Uh, nice list there. Nice list. And we had one other list to look at from this tournament, and that was Matthews. He came in at number seven. He took the opposite route that Stark did. He won his first four games and then lost his fifth. Uh, so was in the running there to, to win all five. But great, great showing there for Matthew. And he's playing Dracothian's Tail. So taking Dracothian's Tail to four and one. Let's take a look at his list here. Zoom that sucker in. All right. So that is Seraph and Starborn. And if you're not too familiar with Starborn, you... You do have some tricks up your sleeve as well. You don't get the minus one damage like you do in Coalesce, but you have abilities to summon, albeit somewhat slowly and random, but you do get to summon in units throughout the game. And then in Dracothian's Tail, you're going to have a lot of movement. You're going to have teleports that, that come with, uh, one teleport that comes with Starborn, but also you're going to have half your army off the board, basically. 
and it comes in around your salon or astrolith at uh whatever time you need it to so usually that's gonna be turn one but not always depending on what the what the board looks like so a fun very strategic sub faction that allows you to pick your target and take them out when you see the opportunity arise so grand strategy is take what's theirs so very very easy one for dracothian's tail and something starborn can usually do pretty well take what's theirs is get have have more of your units in their deployment zone um is it more than theirs or is it do you just have to have a certain number in there take what's theirs more friendly units than enemy units wholly within your opponent's territory so you, you are gonna have to kill quite a bit of stuff but uh then you can just gotta get your stuff over there into their territory so easily done with your our teleports and good dracothian's tail uh triumph inspired we have a Salon Starmaster as our general with Command Trait Ancient Knowledge. It gives you the, the basic reroll that we've talked about before. You, you have many ways to get that in our, our book. And this is one of those with his Command Trait. It also gives you an extra um, spell that you know. Uh, his artifact, God, God Beast Pendant, which you have to take here in Dracothian's Tale, but also you want to take because this allows your Salon to come back. Think of like the old... Uh, uh, well, I guess it's still there. Incandescent retresses, but we used to run that all the time in the previous book. And this is that's basically what it is. Yeah, on a dice roll, you get to bring the slon back, which is critical because if you do get alpha striked and your slon somehow dies in turn one, if he doesn't come back, pretty much your game's over because all your stuff in the sky is not coming down. <laughs> uh man. So spells, mystical unforging and stellar tempest. I like the the mystical unforging. That used to be critical back when. Um. Oh shoot! What's it called? The the five up ward save was always there. Amulet of Destiny, Mystical Unforging was like uh, like you had to take that just to scare people. Now it's kind of just uh. By the way, I can I can take away your artifact if if done right, and that's always a fun thing to tell the other person. It is kind of hard to do. You gotta, you got to do some damage, or you got to roll a five up after you do some damage with the spell. Uh, so it doesn't happen all that often. It's short range, but you know it is what it is. Stellar Temp is great for killing off hordes. And bonding a Cron Spine Incarnate dice. <laughs> so if by some reason you lose your slot in turn one in this list, you're a <laughs> game over. Because now your Cron Spine's going wild in your army. And the rest, of the, well, the rest, hey, maybe Cron Spine's not going to go wild in the half of your army that's up in the sky. <laughs> All right. Uh, we also got a Source Astrolith. Great for extending his spell ranges and in starborn gives you extra summoning points skink star priest with hand of glory we have 30 skinks with daggers and star bucklers and bolt splitters bolt spitters 10 more skinks and five source guard that was great for the bodies there a cron spine incarnate a purple sun and ooh, two units of reinforced salamanders a dracothian tail staple here and this is, is this everything in a battle regiment? Oh, man. Okay, so he he's at, uh, Matthew's at a one drop. So this is, uh, this is he's almost guaranteed to always kind of pick whether either he needs wants to go first if he sees a great opening or if he's not afraid of you killing off the slon, if he can deploy in such a way that you're not going to get him, then he'll he'll let you have the first turn. But uh, hey, nice seeing the, the one drop battle regiment still around. Which is, I mean, it's fairly critical for Dracothian's Tale because if, if the opponent has a chance to take off your slot, they're going to do that, especially if they can determine priority. So, But man, some great threats here. I like the list. It's oh, a very nasty list. We've got a Slon, Astrolith, and a Purple Sun, along with a Cron Spine, and two reinforced units of Salamanders. Whew. And a full unit of Skinks to do what they do. So, <laughs> oh man, Dracothian's tell. Hey, it's still legit. We've seen we've seen some good players win uh, big GTs with them, and Matthew is no slouch here, going four and one at a at a at a good tournament here. So well done, Dracothian's tail, alive and kicking. All right, guys, those are the three lists I wanted to highlight today. I saw I noticed them on. Uh, there might be others than what's on on BCP, what's on uh, Best Coast pairings, but that's that's what I've I can look at and see. So, uh, if you played another GT and did well, let me know below in the comments, and we'll see you guys next time.